Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to take a look at a little bit more work that needs to be done in terms of our trigonometry skills, okay? So as we begin our new unit on trigonometry with right triangles and expanding that to graphs uh, like we are, we need to understand all six trig ratios. And so with that in mind, we're going to take a look at those today. You're going to need your notes, something to write, to write with, and a calculator. So our target goal or our objective for today is to extend your knowledge of trig functions beyond the three basic ratios that you already know from geometry. And that leads us here. So this is something important that you need to make sure you have in your notes somewhere, okay? I know we've been working on some review, but this all ties together, so it's important that you write these down in a nice organized fashion. There are six trigonometry ratios to know. You already know three of them. And your basic three, and also the other uh, three that you don't know to make the six total, rely on your understanding of the fact that an acute angle is where you're always going to be standing at. And you see in this diagram, here's the acute angle. It's labeled with what's called a theta. Now, you notice from that angle's perspective, the side opposite is labeled, the adjacent side is labeled, and the hypotenuse is labeled. So from there, we can set up some trig ratios. These are the three basic ones that you already know. Sine of theta, which is the angle, is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And you'll see the abbreviations over there on the right-hand side. These are the three that you're already familiar with. But there are three more. The three more include cosecant, secant, and what's called cotangent, OK? So these guys right here are the other ones that we need to be familiar with in terms of how we set up our ratios. So the cosecant of theta, you'll notice, is opposite and hypotenuse, but instead, the hypotenuse is in the numerator. So basically, it's the reciprocal of the sine function or the sine ratio. That's what you see over here. It's the reciprocal. It's what we would get if we flipped it over, OK? So it uses the same two terms, opposite and hypotenuse. But instead of opposite over hypotenuse like sine, this is hypotenuse over the opposite side. And secant, it has a similar relationship, but his relationship is with the cosine. So secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, so hypotenuse over adjacent. And what's called the cotangent of theta is adjacent over the opposite side. Rather than opposite over adjacent, like regular tangent, cot cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So he is a reciprocal of the tangent function, OK? So these other three uh, ratios use the same terms it's just where those are located in that fraction are different, or where those are located in that ratio is in a different place. And we'll become more and more familiar with these, but this is going to be a spot in your notes that you're going to refer to quite often. So make sure it's nice and big. Maybe put it in a box or a chart, so someplace you can find easily as we proceed through our uh, practices and our knowledge, OK? So now let's take a look at evaluating the six trig functions of a labeled angle theta, like this diagram. So you'd want to get this one in your notes. It's a right triangle. It's labeled with a theta there. That's a 0 with a little line through it. And that's the angle that we're supposed to stand at. And we need to set up all six of those trig ratios. So sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So let's go ahead and make a little list here on the side. We need to set up the sine of theta cosine of theta, tangent of theta, those are the ones we already know, and now cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. Now for all of these, we're going to need to know the sides of the triangles. Now from where I'm standing at the theta now, can we set up the sine ratio? Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. From there, yep, opposite is 15, hypotenuse is 17. Sure, so the sine of theta is 15 over 17. What about the cosine of theta? Well, cosine requires that we have adjacent over hypotenuse, and we don't have this side right here. 
we don't have our adjacent sides. So we would need to do a little preliminary work here before we could continue through our list. We'd need to do the Pythagorean theorem to find that missing side. So we'd say 15 squared plus x squared equals 17 squared. And we go ahead and take care of our math here. We'd have 17 squared minus 15 squared. And we get x squared equals 64. And then we'd have x equals 8. Once we know that, now we can continue on through our list. So the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so we'd say 8 over 17. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So from where I'm at, that'd be 15 over 8. Now the cosecant and secant and cotangent are ones you're not as familiar with, but remember they're just the reciprocals of those three, okay? So cosecant it is hypotenuse over opposite, which in this case would be 17 over 15. And secant is, again, the reciprocal of the cosine, or hypotenuse over adjacent, so 17 over 8. And cotangent is adjacent over opposite, opposite which would be 8 over 15. So we can use the first three to help easily generate the last three. Now let's take a look at one without a picture. So let's let theta be an acute angle in a right triangle. What are the values of the other five trig ratios in the triangle? So here's what we know. We know that the cosine of that theta angle is 7 over 10. Now, without a picture, it's a little bit tougher. So you know what I always do? That's right, I draw a picture. OK, draw a picture. So I draw myself a right triangle. I put my angle theta wherever I feel like he should go. It doesn't really matter, but he needs to be an acute angle. Yeah, that didn't work out too well. There we go. Needs to be an acute angle. And then we label the triangle accordingly. Adjacent and hypotenuse is what the cosine represents. So adjacent over hypotenuse, that basically gives me numbers for the side of my triangle. I know that this side would be 7 because it's adjacent to me. And 10 is the hypotenuse. Now remember, if we're going to set up all of these, we need to know that missing side over here as well. So we'll go ahead and do the Pythagorean theorem. 7 squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. This would be 49. 100. 100 minus 49 is 51. So the x would be the square root of 51. Can you simplify that? The answer is no. You don't want to write a decimal answer here. Can we split them apart? Can we simplify that radical? Can we take them and divide out a 4 or a 9 or a 16 or a 25, any of those perfect squares? Nope. So we'll just leave them as the square root of 51. So this missing side right here is the square root of 51. Now we can go ahead and generate that big list of the missing five, OK? So who are they? We have the sine, we don't know. Cosine was given to us. So then there'd be tangent. And then there would be, oh, I'll just go ahead and write the cosine in here. That helps. Even though it was given, we'll just copy the answer. And then we have the cosecant. And then we have the secant. And then we have the tangent. So we need to eval or cotangent, my bad. We need to evaluate or find the ratios here for all of these. So the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we set that one up using our theta where we're standing, the opposite side would be the square root of 51 over 10. Now the cosine of theta was given to us. I'm just going to copy down what we had. The tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent. So the square root of 51 over 7. Now let's go ahead and use their relationships, which is the reciprocal idea. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, is the reciprocal of the sine. So hypotenuse over opposite, we'd have 10 over square root of 51. Well, wait, we can't leave a square root in the bottom, so we would multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 51. We'd get 10 square roots of 51 over 51 as my simplified answer. Now let's do the secant. Secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. So basically, it's hypotenuse over adjacent. So 10 over 7. We'll just leave them like that. And then last but not least, the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So we'd end up with 7 over the square root of 51. 
which again, we can't leave the square root of 51 in there. So we'll go ahead and write 7 square roots of 51 over 51. So that's how we would set up all six of those using just some information and not even a triangle at all. It helps to draw yourself a triangle. Okay, let's take a look at another example, but this time we're going to do it with 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90s. So here's a generic picture of a 30, 60, 90, and a 45, 45, 90. And we're going to evaluate exact values of a few of these different ratios now. So if you picture these pictures or maybe draw a little sketch over there, if we need to find the exact values of, let's say, the sine of 60, that means you can't go in your calculator and just type that button because what's going to happen is you're going to end up getting decimal values, you guys. We need to find exact values. We need to keep this in radical form. We need to make sure we understand what is really happening there when we hit those buttons. So the sine of 60 means that we're standing at a 60 degree angle. So that means you would be here at the 60 degree angle. And the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the square root of 3 is my opposite sign. And the hypotenuse is 2. So the sine of 60 is really equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And that's what that calculator is giving you when you type in the sine of 60 and you get that decimal value. It's giving you that same equivalent value, but in, in a non-exact way. We want that exact value, okay? So we're going to think about those 60-degree triangles in this way. Now let's look at the cotangent of 30. Cotangent of 30 requires us to stand at the 30-degree angle because that's what it says. It says stand at the 30 and do the cotangent. So we're up there now. And remember, the cotangent is adjacent over opposite. So adjacent to you, if you were up at that 30, would be the square root of 3. Okay? And then opposite you would be 1. So the cotangent of 30 is considered square root of 3 over 1. Now let's look at the secant of 45. Secant of 45 means we stand at the 45 degree angle. So choose one at the 45 degree angle here, maybe this one down here. We're going to stand at that 45 degree angle and we're going to set up the secant fraction, which is hypotenuse over adjacent. So the hypotenuse is square root of 2. The adjacent is 1, so square root of 2 over 1. So that's how we would find those values using our special right triangle pictures. Now notice the special right triangles over here have those same relationships we've been talking about. The hypotenuse is double the short leg for 30, 60, 90. So that's where these ideas come from. Let's try to make that connection and, and bring those things together. Okay. Now let's take a look at what we need to do for tomorrow when you come to class. Thank you for watching this and taking good notes.